This is an uh, undesirable BMW F3 328i. It comes equipped with either the N20 or N26. In our case, the N26. A turbocharged four-cylinder engine that has a terrible reputation when it comes to reliability. We first introduced this car to the channel when it was in terrible shape. Damn! Are those rat droppings? Oh shit, I put it into sport ego. and the car started vibrating. <laughs> Since then, we've tackled all the major maintenance and now we're ready to start modifying it. Starting off with performance. The big question, however, is, is it even worth tuning a 328? In today's video, we're about to find out. What? As you guys can see, we're going to be showing the F3328 some more love today. Just look at all the mods on the table. Kande. Going from right to left, we have the Turner Motorsports Inlet Upgrade. We have the MAD intake setup, the housing, the intake cone, the pipes. We also have the charge pipe upgrades from MAD as well, their Dom pipe and their five inch stepped intercooler. Yeah, so we do have the full MAD suite going on here for the N26. For the exhaust setup, we're gonna be running the AW catback setup, which is essentially like a muffler delete with a massive resonator in the back. Yeah, this is not a muffler, it's a resonator. It's their 180 technology, which I am currently running on the F30 wide body and it sounds pretty epic. So yeah, you get the section right here and the one that exits out the back bumper. We do have the tips in diamond black. And to top it all off, we do have these ST coilovers, which is among our favorite coilover brand here at Vehicle Virals. These ones are the XA and they're specifically for the X-Drive F30. I'll make it super easy for you guys as always and I'll leave links down in the video's description to all the products you guys see on the table. We are a dealer for everything you see here with the exception of the Turner Motorsports Inlet Upgrade. And as far as the upgrades for MAD parts, uh, we recently became a dealer for them. So we're still adding their products on our website. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at vehiclevirals.com or you can just chat with us live on the website. We're gonna be tuning the car as well because I mean, we're doing dog pipes and stuff. That'll be the last step uh, that we do. Right now, just gonna take everything apart so we can install the intake, the inlet, and the charge pipe, which should be relatively easy to do. Tell you that. Oh God. There it is. Guess what? You got another one. Oh, my fingers are already shit. <laughs> I know. Ike always says, Yo, put on some gloves, my guy. <laughs> it just goes in raw. Yeah, that's how we do it around here. All right. There you go. That one was actually nice and loose. Kitty. Oh, it's a boy. Oh, yeah. She's broken. Let's move on to the charge pipe. There it is. There you go. Uh -huh. All right, there you go. So all it's out. These are rusted, bro. Holy fuck. Did it just snap? <laughs> Where did that go? <laughs> Keep in mind, this aluminum torque <laughs> screw is in plastic and it somehow sees to the plastic. You guys are just ripping it all out together. I'm getting <laughs> rained on by dirt. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> bro, was there a bird's nest on top of the intercooler? I'm really rinsing my eyeball, bro. Why you wear safety glasses? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get this one on. I guess right before we install it, I'll show you guys the difference between uh, the factory intercooler, which is this baby size one, and a mad one. Stepped, and you also have the metal ends, which again, more, you know, plastic and engine bay. This can get brittle over time, it could fail. And as far as cooling down the intake temps, much bigger surface, and check out the beefiness in the back. Beef. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, he's gonna change the coolant hose. Jess, that he f***ed up. I did not f*** it up. He did not order the coolant. I don't know what he's talking about. He never told me to order it. It was a suggestion. My f it was a suggestion. My f it was. The mad mastery of art design charge pipe. So we got this one that's gonna become one with the silicone coupler. All right, tech tip. Definitely uh, swap over the O-rings from the original charge pipe to the new one. Good enough? Nah. <laughs> My fingers! Push more. Pull at the same time, ho. I am. 
Oh, teamwork. Oh, we got the satisfying clip. <laughs> Don't forget the clips. Oh, yeah. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, so that's good to go. We're tightened here onto the uh, intercooler. We do have bottom charge pipe lines up like right underneath the culprit right here. Top one is like right here, so. So we got the factory Gaka inlet right here that's falling apart. See how it's all just kind of snapped off and broken. So it broke right here at the part where you tighten it. It broke right here and I'm sure it'll continue to break. So here's a turning one, which is made out of silicone, a lot more reliable than plastic. And you're pretty much just attaching the accessories that it comes with. This one sits right here, that. Might make it easier to use silicone grease because it is a tight fit. And then we have a little small one right here. So that goes in there. And the last part is the part that broke off. That's how it's supposed to be. But this one, you're actually gonna have to transfer this. There you go. Make sure you transfer the gasket. <laughs> it's really important. Yeah. I really can't show you guys much, but you guys get the idea. I did tighten up this one here. This one I left it loose in case we need to rotate it. Again, silicone grease could probably help in this situation. Uh -huh. Ah. Maybe get some light in there. Um, by the way. Ooh, perfect alignment. All right, guys, a little bit hard to see, but the inlet is installed, clamp is tight, 10 mil is tight, and now we can move on to the intake. I was currently prepping this housing here to go on. They do include this right here. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, this comes included with the, with the mat intake. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up and that's gonna insert into the passenger side grommet right here. And then the driver side hole is kind of bent. I think uh, UPS might've been playing basketball with this upgrade, but it's okay. We, we should be able to flatten it out. This is the first pipe we'll install. It goes down here to the inlet and we're gonna have it where it is facing up and it'll insert on the bottom section of the housing right here. All right guys, we're almost done here. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tighten this. So obviously since we have the rubber offside, we can make it work. I still find it a little bit strange that it's, it weighs you know, against this, but I'm not, I don't think it's gonna cause any issues. I think it looks good. They look fine. Nice. Looking very good. Wow. And I do have a little slot here. So that's where it's gonna sit. Lines up. Beep. Torque spec. So we got one more component left and that is right here. So we use the remainder hardware back section here that goes installed onto this. And then the front section gets secured with the rubber grommets. That's right here. Okay. All right, we're setting the heat shield down. Let's get the grommet popped in. Like so. All right, put the bolts through, and they all threaded in nicely. All right, I'm gonna go get the tool for that. Oh, look! <laughs> Matt includes this, guys. Allen wrench. Just like Ikea. All right, we'll be back in two years. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, so we have intake installed, charge pipe, intercooler, inlet. It's looking very clean here. Obviously, we gotta wipe down the fingerprints that we got going on here, but we'll do that a little bit later on. And I think uh, we're gonna move on to the downpipe and then we'll finish things off with the suspension. Now it's time to take care of the downpipe and the exhaust system. Ike went ahead and removed and unhooked a various amount of components from the engine bay to prep us to continue underneath the car. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop the exhaust system from the cat back since we're gonna have to modify the rear section anyways later on to get the AWE set up on there. And then we'll have all the room to do the downpipe also, because we purchased a downpipe for the N20, not the N26, the connection is gonna be different. So we're gonna have to modify the section. If you're gonna purchase downpipe exhaust from us, just make sure it's either for the N20 or the N26 based on the car that you have. Look, Carlos giving us a hand here. <laughs> it's not much, but it's honest work. Oh, God, oh, it's so heavy. Oh. oh, he threw it up there. He was showing off how light that shit was. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. All right, 
right, so we got the mad downpipe set up. O2 sensors transferred over. Remember, guys, for race cars only. <laughs> yeah, we're taking this on the track. <laughs> Just the track. Uh, yeah, there's a good amount of weight savings going on there, too. All right, so downpipe installed. Now we move on to modifying the mini pipe, chopping off the muffler, and installing the AWE setup. Installing the axle back is pretty straightforward. AWE has a great guide that walks you through the entire process. Essentially, there's a dimple on the bottom side of the exhaust pipe where you would have to cut on the factory exhaust. This muffler is just gonna fall on our heads. Anybody else experience hearing loss? No. <laughs> Already lost all my hearing. Then all you would have to do is use the supplied clamps to put everything all together. By the way guys, it's an F30 day here at the shop apparently. So we have Kaka. Get the hell out the way. <laughs> so we have the 328 and 20, 335 and 55, and then the 340 B58. By the way, this guy would love to work on your car. So hit him up at Swap Depot. We'll, we'll get you all sorted out with mods, maintenance and everything, right? Especially if you have a 5.10, uh, F10, 550, you need a motor. We love 550s around here. Yeah. Totally. Anytime you gotta work on those, you just swap the motor, that's it. That's, that's how you fix every problem. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move on to the ST coilovers for the car. These are the XA versions. So like the mid-tier option, there's a more affordable option that we offer, which are the X. These are the XA and I think there's an XTA. This one is budget friendly and you also have adjustment when it comes to dampening via this small adjuster right here, which I'm surprised because a lot of companies come with an adjuster for all four of them. This one, it comes with one adjuster for all four. So essentially you cannot lose this. You get that on there and then you have some adjustability from softer to firmer. The same for the front setup as well, right up top right there. Let's begin. That's exactly how you're supposed to do that, by the way. You take your spreader, you put it in here. Oh, that spreader. You we always it. just use a pry bar on here. There you go. Oh my God. That's what you spread, by the way. You spread the cheeks. Giggity. Wow. Dude, Boston. It's definitely helping out with the dust and debris <laughs> oh, yeah. the shaft. I'm surprised that the bump stops still exist though. I feel like these have been out before. <laughs> but they didn't do anything about this. Yeah. Uh, Are those onion rings? <laughs> I don't know, so taste bad. it. <laughs> I'll give it a shot, bro. Oh! So does it taste like arse or what? Tastes like onion rings from <laughs> Burger King. Burger King. <laughs> I think Max is it out. Max is it out. All right, that's good. That's the eyeball? I know what I'm talking about. You're not gonna count the threads, bro? Uh, the tape measure. Oh my yeah. God, of course you would put it there. You take your Frisbee, you put it on, you take your nut, you put it on, you tighten. Wow, such a simple assembly. Complete. Ooh wee, that is very, very good looking. Yeah, just don't look at this. <laughs> Holy sh I think anybody seen this shit. Top mount, big turbo. <laughs> like When's the next left. YouTube video, dog? So I can send them Five, over there. Two months. Two hey, months? <laughs> this, is, this is the complete form of the 328. We didn't this is actually, yeah, this is actually the 328. Swapped it, big turbo. Battery died in the camera, so we couldn't. It's at 55. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> Jeez. Same, same. You rocking a new hood on there, too? GTS? Frozen black hood? Look at my fingerprints. You like that? Oh, oh leave the fingerprints, bro. Ah! That thing it though! I like an F80 so far. Bro, I love it. I love it? If you want to get out of the N54 game, do it. It's the best thing I've ever done. done. Uh, <laughs> I, I do kind of agree with that. <laughs> Look at this! Well, try to pull out the bump stop from up there. <laughs> Spring is out. Uh, you don't want this. Yeah, there you go. Dude, sick bumps up. Put some pressure on it. I want to see how clap these like, there you go. are. It's cool. Oh, yeah. Those are clapped. <laughs> They're clapped over right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
Oh no! no. That's it. <laughs> That's it. She's done. So we're transferring over the top section here. Yes. We have our new strut. Before you install the spring, make sure you take this pad, shove it up in there. It goes. It does something like that. Give him a hand, Ali. Oh my God, not that. Just hold on the control arm, you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what's going on here? All right. All right. She's in. I don't know what's going on with my What the f going on? Oh. <laughs> All right, there you go, guys. Rear section installed. We're going to actually take care of the other side off camera. The, f the way. Ours. <laughs> All right, just gonna, uh, now we're just going to get the wheels on there, lower the car, and see uh, what the right height looks like. Uh oh. Eh, eh, oh. Oh, shit. Bro, I don't even think it's settled yet. Yeah, it. a Look at mine. that, though. No. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. Luxury wheels with this ride height. Looks like it. Shut up. <laughs> also, we're going to take care of those headlights in the following video as well, so make sure to subscribe. It honestly doesn't look too bad. Bro, it does not look bad. You add a 10 mil spacer in a rare dog, and you might have some sauce. Take a look at that engine bay, guys. It looks so clean. And do you guys remember what it looked like on the maintenance video that we recorded? And look at it now. It looks amazing. Also, we did replace the Kyle off camera because the old one was flaking away and just pretty much crumbling like lace chips. And I'm very happy about the progress this car has made. So we're moving on to tuning. We're gonna be using boot mod because it's one of the only OTS maps that really works for this car. So we have the boot mod app already open. We're connected to the car and it's telling us to back up the stock tune before we move on to the OTS maps, which are right here, stage one, stage two. Since we are running an aftermarket downpipe, we're gonna be using stage two. Before we do that, I wanted to let you guys know we are using the MHC Universal Wireless adapter to connect to the car. Yeah, no weird, right? MHC adapter, boot mod tune. Um, I was supposed to get my hands on a boot mod adapter, but I haven't had the chance yet. Uh, so we're gonna just use the MHC one, which kind of works for boot mod, MHD, XHP. It works for all of it, even like uh, any of those coding uh, apps you, that you download on your phone. So this is pretty much universal for the most part with an MHD uh, stamp on there. Anyway, so we'll go in there where it says stock tune and then we'll download the file, which is gonna upload it to the cloud under our account. Like that. Let's see, we're doing stage two. We'll be on pump gas 93. We'll download stage two. Are you sure you'd like to acquire stage two 93 octane map? Cause when you buy a boot mod, you get one tuning map included with the cost of the license. If you wanna unlock the rest of the maps, then you pay, I believe if, uh, it depends on the car, 50 to hundred dollars once you do that then you have kind of all the all the maps unlocked for your specific car that's the map pack right map pack yeah so we're gonna say yes we'll go on here and then let's see if we can change the options exhaust burbo burbo's activated gts startup raw let's go ahead and turn it on speed limiter v max so no limiter <laughs> let's break the speed limit on this car which is the top is 160. I don't, I don't think, think this car can make it that far. <laughs> I don't think so either. Anyways, I guess there's a lot of stuff you can mess around with if you have time. And now we're about to flash. Make sure you have your battery charger connected, guys. Don't break the car. You need one of these or something similar to keep the battery charging. With these F-Series cars, you don't want them to go to sleep while you're trying to tune the car. So those are just a few things that we do just to make sure it stays on. All right. One eternity later. We're at 100%, so we're gonna be able to party very soon here. Sure. So let's go ahead and get a cold start with that GTS roar. What? GTS roar. That was like no wow. cold start, literally <laughs> nothing. I guess because you were revving it earlier. All right, let's hear that intake. <laughs> I forgot to put it on sport mode. Oh my God. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey man, if we don't get a drive chain malfunction in the first pull, it's a win. 
Let's go. In 20 life. First drive, baby. First of all, I gotta say, how fing smooth is the ride with the ST Colors right now? Dude, butter. Right? Woo! Let's do a second gear pull real quick. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> oh! 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 I hit 85. I hit 85. Yeah, 85? Yes! Damn! <laughs> In Mexico, by the way. Yeah. By the way, I meant kilometers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Let's do some downshifts real quick. It's pretty saucy, bro. Here we go fourth gear. Oh, hey. Third gear. Let's go. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, okay. So I noticed something. It did the automatic kick down because we don't have XHP. Sad. So when you have it on manual mode, it doesn't matter. I've experienced this with the wide body F30. If you do not have SHP, it will kick you down to a lower gear, so it can be at a higher RPM. Is that because we don't have the Sport Trans? Yeah. That, well, that and because, yeah, you don't have a, essentially you don't have the tune. In the Sports Trans, all it is is a tune. So we can't do like a third gear pull at like 35, 4,000 RPM because it's just going to shift me down. Which is not bad, but you don't really have full control. No, the car runs way better with the tune and the mods. Very nice. Also, it, it, by the way, it also shifted for me. Another thing that you would- Yeah, I felt that because I thought I saw your hand go down no. and then yeah. so, and it already shifted. So another another reason you might want to use XHP, you can remove that and you can add like a soft limiter or something. All right, let's do a first gear pull. X drive launch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Got the little farts between the shifts too. All right, well, let me tell you guys something. If you're on a budget, you couldn't get quite the N55 or the B58. You can only get enough change to, you know, afford uh, N20, N26. This it, is kind of it. It's not bad, bro. This is stock turbo. Stock turbo. You got some really cool induction sound. The exhaust sounds a lot more alive. And boy, you got a little kick. You get a little kick. Me likey. Some of those sh pickup trucks in this area. <laughs> Same style too, not that one. I don't, I don't mind the S10. The S10 was fine. It's just uh, the other one that went by like little brick looking ones. The old Toyota. Yeah. I want you guys to hear the induction sounds. You know the cool thing about the setup is it's not really droning in here. It's not super loud. I feel like the loudness is really only heard from outside, and you just get a small. A small sample inside. It's a four-cylinder light. It is a four-cylinder after all. There's only so much you can do to it to make it sound like good. I would say it sounds better than a stock, 100% for sure. I think we did a pretty good job with it. Even though we stayed on the budget, I think we uh, accomplished something good. Let's see if we can rev it. Don't do this if you don't have your timing chains down, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it will blow up. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of beating the shit out of the car right now, but maintenance is taken care of, so. Maintenance first! Then performance. All right, we'll do one more pull, and we'll get you some outside shots. I think we blew through the secondary cat and stinks in here. It smells like eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. To get rid of the egg smell <laughs> i mean honestly bro it's not bad bro, it's, it's not good. fast but it's not slow well, it depends who you tell it's not fast yeah okay I, to us it's not fast it's it's probably making close to 300 horsepower close to 300 torque right now i would say crank i don't think maybe 250 260 wheel which is almost in the n55 335 territory when they're stock so i mean it's not bad and we made it sound pretty cool and with the right suspension and obviously the maintenance and everything, it's a pretty cool little go kart, you know. You like it? Woo! Woo! The downshifts, dude. The downshift, dog. It pulls. It's throwing me back. <laughs> We're gonna try to break boost it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay. I don't think Antel Agar Big Boost does anything. <laughs> Sound for now. Sound good. Right? I still smell eggs though. I, well, I smell eggs and cookies. <laughs> I smell eggs and cookies at the moment. Well, probably because of the downpipe and stuff like that. I can say this if this car has survived the immense amount of beating we've given it within the last hour or so, I think it's pretty reliable at this point. I would say so. And also, don't forget 152,000 miles on the clock. That's not bad. We did the maintenance right. You know what? Performance upgrades on this car didn't turn out too bad. It definitely sounds better and it picked up enough power to get it in line with the N55 variant of the F30 when it's stock. I mean, almost. Honestly, that's not too bad considering we didn't spend a whole lot on the mods. Sound crazy, dog. Yes. Holy moly. <laughs> I think we got one more video on this car where we make the F30 look like a straight up show car. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and like the video if you enjoyed this episode. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.